Jambo, mimi naitwa Jeremy Damares and of course I'm here at Limax Suit Apartment and of course I always tell you wakati uko Kenya you want somewhere to relax mahali kuko na amani just come here. Na leo hii I'm very happy because I have my brother Isaac from PA na uh, the reason iko na Isaac it's because a lot of men has, have been going through a lot of stuff in America. Labda ni mambo ya ya ya, ya, ya marriage zao ama mambo ya kazi and Isaac amepitia magumu sana. He went to the US back in 1987 Mungu amemsaidia mpaka akakuwa a manager alikuwa na manage about 40 billion kwa benki moja which we gonna know when he comes here. Lakini mambo iligeuka. Akawa mzungu na huyo mzungu amemkimbiza yote mpaka sasa saizi amesema amefika mahali pa kuwa homeless mpaka sasa amehepe ame hapa Kenya. I want you to stay there to see story yake ndio at least tujifunze ama tujue what happens back there. Mtu amesoma sana lakini mtu mwingine anakuja kumgeushia kumgeuzia maisha yake inakuwa kama ni drama ama kama ni I mean I don't even know what to say about it. Stay there tuongee na bwana Isaac. Yes, Mr. Isaac. Yes. How are you, sir? Very good. Good to see you, man. Yes. Karibu Kenya. Asante sana. Yes. Yes. US kwaje? Huku. Eh. Ni noma. Ni noma. US ni noma. Ni noma lakini kuna bala. Amen. Kuna watu wengi sana wamekuwa sana wakitamani sana kwenda US. Yes. Na in fact that size nimetoka na mtu anampigia sema anambia Jeremy please take me to diaspora. Yes. Mimi namwambia I wish ninaweza ningechukua watu wetu kwanza ni wapeleke and then sasa nikulete. But I really like when I have someone who is also shelling another side of the diaspora yenye watu hawajui. Yes. So karibu sana. Yes, asante. Let me give you this opportunity kwanza uwasalimie wala malafiki zako watu wetu KDM. Yes. yes, hello everybody. Mm -hmm. Isaac Ishengo here. Mm -hmm. um, to all the people, all friends and relatives all over the, the world, mm -hmm. and especially in the diaspora. I'm Jambo. Yes. Awesome. Tuanze hapa sasa. US umetoka pande gani? I I live in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Yeah, for the last uh, since 1987. 1987. 87. So it means you went there uh, you were how old? I was very young, I was 17. 17. Yes. Man that's a long time. I don't know where I was then. 1987 if I tell you where I was. Yes. Utaanza kusema hapana. Mm. Mm. Yep. Wow. Yeah. So we end I went to school mm -hmm. um uh university uh Kutztown University in right. Pennsylvania mm -hmm. in, uh, in 1987. Mm -hmm. And then I graduated mm -hmm. um in 1992. Mm -hmm. I was in a 5 year program mm -hmm. uh, physics and math. Mm -hmm. So I got a BS in uh, physics. Wow. Yeah. Mm, congratulations. Yeah, sante. Mm. Yes. So hapa kwenu ni wapi Kiambu? Ama uh, Kenya? Kijabi. Kijabi. Kijabi yeah. Oh, nice. So back then uh -huh. getting connection to the US. Uh -huh. How how did it happen? Uh, I was fortunate because my two brothers and my uncle were, were there. Uh -huh. So it was a little bit easier. Uh -huh. Um uh, they invited me uh -huh. also to make an application for me to to go to college. So okay. I applied. Uh -huh. Um and Don't be hold that was accepted. Mm. Yeah. So it was means uh, after high school that's when after you left. High school, I I worked a little bit mm -hmm. in Kijabi mm -hmm. uh, printing press. Mm -hmm. But then after two years I, that's when I I decided to go to mm. to US. Mm. Yeah. So many of the people who you school together labda wengi watakuona hapa waseme ai jamani udio ule jamaa. I know they mm -hmm. see me all the time because I you know I'm still in touch with a lot of um, uh, homeboys okay. from back in the days mm -hmm. some of them are doing well some of them are still mm -hmm. uh, in shags right. so good to see them mm. yeah. okay so let me know how was the life back then in the US um, it was very <coughs> difficult to be honest with you mm -hmm. I um, I started off even when I was in college mm -hmm. Uh, even though my brothers mm -hmm. are the ones who invited me, mm -hmm. uh, they gave me tough love. Mm -hmm. In other words, you have two hands, mm -hmm. you have a brain, mm -hmm. go figure out how to make money. Mm -hmm. So I struggled there for four years okay. to a point I was actually homeless mm -hmm. while still going to school. Oh, in the US? Uh, in the US, yes. Back in 97? Yeah, 1998, in, uh, 1989, I was mm -hmm. actually homeless mm -hmm. for three months. Wow. Yeah. Bado wakiwa mwa walikuambia sasa walikuosha mikono wakakwambia yes. my friend. I didn't talk to them but um, later on mm -hmm. I came to realize this was actually tough love. Mm. It taught me how to fetch for myself. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So. And of course because I know kuna wazazi wengine ambao hawaelewi kizungu na ningetaka sana waelewe history yeah, yako. Yeah. If it is possible we speak a language they can so. well, well understand. Najua hujawahi sasa una Kiswahili. Hata kama kizungu bado mimi nangangana nacho. I would really want everybody who <laughs> is here taifa. at yes. least yeah. Na I mean at least kuwe nyumbani kidogo. Yes. So now um uh, lakini huku lala nje kwa streets. Ah uh, nilikuwa nilikuwa na gari. Okay. Gari mzee hivi. Mm -hmm. Alikuwa na lala huko. 
na ni winter mm. valia nguo kama tatu mm. tano mm. alafu na blanket mm. alafu na lala mm. yeah. did you ever thought of coming back home uh, at some point yes mm -hmm. yes okay yeah. So uliona hapa si ile Ulaya tunasikianga? Sasa mimi ukiniambia siku hiyo ukiniambia America ni kuzuri, nikwambia uacha. Wote ndio ndio nyumbani. Right. Yeah. Okay, now tell me your story. Yes. Mm -hmm. So um after college mm -hmm. I decided to ni, nienda nikaanze kufanya makazi ovyo ovyo. Mhm. Mm Alafu in 1996 mm -hmm. kapata bibi. 96. Yes. Mm -hmm. We got married. Mm -hmm. And at that time um I got a job, mm -hmm. a sales job mm -hmm. at a bank. Mm -hmm. So I started working for a bank in Kavanya in two years. Mm -hmm. I got promoted to from from customer service to assistant manager. Wow. In less than six months, I became a, man, became a manager. Mm -hmm. I started going to school for banking, uh, for banking mm -hmm. even though I was a physicist. Mm -hmm. So from there, um, mm -hmm. so I became a regional manager. Wow. So I used to manage about uh, 13 branches mm -hmm. with over 50 employees. Wow. Uh, we didn't less than one year. Mm. So then from there, um, the CEO approached me. Mm -hmm. and said they want me to go and start the cash management department. Mm -hmm. So Nikanda, the same bank. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I was managing the cash. Well, I started mm -hmm. and I was managing the cash management department. Right. So from <coughs> there, um, after 14 years, mm -hmm. that's when Citibank actually approached me mm -hmm. and I said we've heard about you would you come and start a government banking mm -hmm. so in 2007 I left National Pen Bank after 14 years I joined City mm -hmm. uh, City Bank mm -hmm. and um, there I was I actually established a government banking mm -hmm. and then I went from zero to um, 40 billion so I was managing 40 billion wow. uh, before I left uh, last year 40 billion US dollars yes, I was managing yes I was actually I, I was through the ranks. I was actually senior vice president for mm. Citibank Public Funds. Mm. So I was managing all the money for the government mm. uh, in Pennsylvania, New York, California, mm -hmm. DC, mm -hmm. um, and New York. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's come back here. 1996, mm. Umeoa. Uh -huh. Umeoa Mukenya Mzungu. Hey! <laughs> Kizungu nayo jameni. How now did it happen? <laughs> I knew my potential, so that's why. Uh, Kawana, 1996, mm -hmm. 1998, we had the first uh, son, mm. uh, who's now 26. Wow. Uh, as an engineer. Mm -hmm. And then in 2004, mm -hmm. we had a uh, second one. Mm -hmm. uh, he's now going to be 20. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, so initially hapa ukitafuta mzungu, mm -hmm. wewe sasa hii si ile ati ni, ni upendo. Lazima sasa uone hii masomo nimesoma, lazima ni kuwe na papers. Yeah. And yeah. you know most of the time yeah. I tell people, I tell these people, unaenda America umesoma, umesoma, una mm -hmm. papers, it yep. still make you we uko stagnant. Yes. Mm. When we first met, you know, it was not really love at first sight. Mm -hmm. Ni ile much kind of mood to it, then you end up now having kids. Right. So, um but it, later on in life it mm -hmm. became very difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So sasa mmeona 96. Yeah. Umepata papers, mm -hmm. amekutafutia, amekusaidia, mm -hmm. hakukusumbua. Uh -uh. And then now um, the journey started. Mm -hmm. That's when, you know, started now going up in the ladder mm -hmm. with uh, my first bank job. Mm -hmm. uh, and then she realized, oh, this guy is making money. So at the time, I was not really focused on uh, I was focused on my career mm -hmm. at the same token, <coughs> raising kids. It was right. not easy because mm -hmm. when we started, we didn't have any money. Mm -hmm. So, um, but after two years after we got married, I was able to borrow some money and buy a piece of land and bought a first house, um, which we stayed until maybe for four years. Mm -hmm. Then we bought a bigger house. Mm -hmm. um, so the kids started growing. Um, little did I see the signs. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, Mama, pesa. Mm. Uh, she was a shop alcoholic, shopaholic. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So me, I didn't, you know, I saw I'm trying to save money. Mm -hmm. There's no money to be saved. Alikuwa mm. pesa sana. Aliona sasa huyu kijana anatengeneza pesa. Sasa pesa zako na access ya jamani zake. Sasa makosa nilifanya. We open a joint account. Mm -hmm. Sasa hii mshahara wangu inakuja hapo. Um, this is my first job. Mm -hmm. My salary was coming there. Mm -hmm. So when I wanted to pay up, I have to end up with my vitu, especially with the kids. Mm -hmm. He was buying. The kids were wearing the most expensive items in the market. Mm -hmm. You know, Tommy Hilfiger, um, Nikes, you name it. So I uh, used to complain, but mm -hmm. then I got to a point that I stopped complaining. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
kasema wewe tumia sasa yes. hii ni lifestyle ya kujitakia mm, they say msimba wa kujichoma ni msimba wa kujitakia hula machozi <laughs> so now uh yeye alikuwa anafanya kazi yes he used to be an auditor mm -hmm. actually what had happened is he never finished college uh so in 1997 mm -hmm. uh, i told her to go back to school mm -hmm. um, she finally finished um uh accounting degree she got a accounting degree mm -hmm. and i paid for it mm -hmm. so i was struggling I was actually working two jobs mm -hmm. i was working in the bank and then i was driving limousines right so on weekends i actually drove limousines the whole weekend so mm -hmm. i had no time to rest mm -hmm. yeah so i'm making all this money but then she's blowing it mm -hmm. yeah and nothing i could have done Sasa, your friends, your families, what is happening? Uh, are they not trying to advise? Let me tell you, in, um, I brought my own sister, mm -hmm. who is now in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, she saw it. Mm -hmm. She saw what was going on, but I told her to zip because uh, it could, you know, it could create a problem for me. Mm -hmm. In 2004, my father died. Mm -hmm. And um, um, my son, my youngest son, was born the same same year, mm -hmm. in July mm -hmm. uh, 2004. So the wife at the time told me, why don't you invite your mother to come and help us with the kids? So in 2004, so I made a visa application, invited our mother. Mm -hmm. So she's the one who was actually raising our two boys. Yeah. And up until 2019. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're a sister now? So my sister, mm -hmm. the first sister who was in UK, U, uh, U.S., the mm -hmm. one I brought in the U.S., mm -hmm. actually went back mm -hmm. and then decided to go to U.K. Mm -hmm. with her husband. Mm -hmm. Then the second sister, I invited her to come over. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't even remember, it's like 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. She also came. Mm -hmm. She stayed with me for a little bit and my mother. Mm -hmm. um, and then after a while, then she, she decided to find her own place. Mm -hmm. So they saw it. Mm -hmm. They saw what was going on. Mm -hmm. But I told them, listen, you mm -hmm. see it, mm -hmm. you zip it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So what were you feeling then? Uh, what was happening now, I have my mother. Mm -hmm. um, I had to protect my mother. Mm -hmm. um, at the same token, uh, here's my sister. I'm trying to help them mm -hmm. without having to cause a commotion. Yes. Because I realized this is, I mean, total danger. Mm -hmm. Because this woman has started to react, mm -hmm. um, especially when my sister was staying there. Mm -hmm. uh, you could see the tension, um, especially when my mother and my sister would sit down to talk. Mm -hmm. We were talking our language, the mm. uh, She didn't like it. Mm. She thinks we're talking behind our back, yes. which was, you know, we would not. Mm. Um, then the in-laws came in, mm -hmm. uh, play. Mm -hmm. They actually went and built a house right walking distance from our house. Wow. Uh, that also became a problem. Mm. These people would wake up, you know, 6.30, I'm without a shirt having my coffee, and I'll see the garage door open. The door is open. They had a combination for the garage. That created even more problems for me. Mm. Yeah. It was... Um, they took over the house mm -hmm. and I tried to talk to her. I said, listen, this is our house. We raise the children the way we want it, not the way your parents want it. Mm -hmm. um, it was the old man out. Mm -hmm. And um, the best thing my mother did is to just observe and never say anything. Mm -hmm. uh, she never even got involved in our arguments. Mm -hmm. yeah. Na sisi tunaonanga wazungu tunafikiria somehow they are angels. Eh, wacha ni kuambie. Mm -hmm. uh, see angels. Mm. Uh, as a matter of fact, and as I will tell you later on how mm -hmm. they ended, the marriage ended, mm -hmm. uh, it was one of those things that they study you mm -hmm. and they see you have potential to make money. Mm -hmm. They will capitalize on it mm. and then they will try to get everything. In my case, I lost everything. <laughs> wow, so now Wakati Stonefania he bank. How much were you making, if you don't mind? About 200. A year? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a lot of money. Yeah. Nasa pesa isi kujaza sasa ni kutumia tu. Ni kutumia. Hmm. Lakini, uh, ni, ni unajua kulikuwa na bonuses. Mm -hmm. Na likuwa na the time. Yes. Uh, na the time and a project. Kame nyumba. Mm -hmm. I had a big, big house, four bedroom house. Mm -hmm. Swimming pool. Mm -hmm. I even had a bar outside. Mm -hmm. Landscaping. Mm -hmm. As an owner, ah, this kitchen is old. Mm -hmm. Tungoy. Mm -hmm. You know, you spend a hundred thousand on a kitchen remodeling, mm. Mm. Uh, landscaping a hundred thousand. So all this money is just now yeah. uh, going, coming in and going. Mm -hmm. So she was in competition. I think she's trying, she was trying to prove to her parents mm -hmm. that she's capable. They would know she was not making that much money. Mm -hmm. She was making like 50,000. Mm -hmm. And she worked there for 10 years, uh, 20, 20 years. Mm. Yeah. Wow. The state government, mm -hmm. you don't make money. Mm. Mm -hmm. So now the kids here, mm -hmm. um, 
were they seeing what is happening? Am I th they were uh, just for their mother? They were oblivious. Mm -hmm. And I think a part of it is the, the grandparents mm -hmm. were trying to show me that I'm nobody. Um, give me a prime example. They will go and, like, I try to give my kids mm -hmm. what they need. Mm -hmm. A lot of what they need and less of what they want. Mm -hmm. The grandparents were trying to compete with me. So if I told the kids I'm not going to buy those $250, $300 shoes, mm -hmm. they actually will go and buy. And then show yourself, your dad cannot afford or your dad does not want to have. They have money. Mm. They're very well to do. Mm -hmm. um, your dad does not want to have you to have these shoes mm. or $2,000 bike. Mm. I can't buy a $2,000 bike. No. I can buy you 100 or 200 mm. not 2000 Yes. So the kid just shows up mm -hmm. with a two thousand dollar bike. Mm. It's like a slap on my face. I know. Yeah. What? So it it was um, I was in big time competition. Mm. Um, uh, we did a lot of vacations. Mm -hmm. She's trying to show everybody that we are we have well, money. Uh, pesa. Uh, but all this is our show. Mm. Yeah. We used to have parties mm -hmm. in the house. Um, I used to have nyamachoma mm -hmm. for. Everybody. Mm -hmm. But it got to a point you could tell she was not liking the fact that I have Africans coming over. Mm -hmm. And I saw it, I read it. She wanted people with money. Mm -hmm. She was only associating with people with money, mm -hmm. uh, not just anybody. Mm -hmm. Even my friends, if it's the Africans and they have money, she was very nice to them. Mm -hmm. Like we, we used to go on vacations with a couple, a uh, few guys, I mean couples that had money, mm -hmm. well established. She had no problem. Yeah. Lakini wacha mtu ana kuna kuna kuje. Unaona anaita wazungu wenzake wanakuja kando. Wanapika chakula yao kando. Mm. Yeah. That was that was not good. Yeah. So hii mambo yote ikifanyika sasa wewe kama Isaac yeah. ukikaa pale, ulikuwa unajuta, ulikuwa unaj sasa unajiambia namna gani because you already here you are in it. Sasa? Mhm. Mm Vile nilivyofanya, mm -hmm. nilisema wacha nikaongeza because I wanted to retire early. Yes. Um let me contribute more towards my retirement mm -hmm. because any money that I save mm -hmm. is just going to waste. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's being spent. Asa, kaenda, vile makosa nifanya, nikiwa hii bank, nikaenda kafungu account ingine. My own personal account. Mm -hmm. Najua, I was helping families. Yes. Uh, especially my one brother um, got very sick. Mm -hmm. uh, I was helping him. He didn't have his biashara in me and kila mwezi na mtumia pesa. So I was trying to help him, and then he got sick. Mm -hmm. So a lot of my resources actually went to, to help him. Mm -hmm. uh, he literally died about a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. um, but he used to be in the US, mm -hmm. so he came here, life was horrible. Mm -hmm. And then he ended up dying. Mm -hmm. And then um, all this time that I'm trying to think I'm saving for my future, mm -hmm. he ended up being against what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, about maybe seven, eight years ago, mm -hmm. She did Yanza. Kombana, um, non-stop, is always demeaning me in front of people. Mm. Demeaning from people, from my mother. Um, she would curse me in front of my mother. Mm. I did not even care. Mm. When her parents were there, she was an angel. Mm -hmm. But um, I wake up in the morning, she wake up at 6 a.m. Makerere, mm -hmm. Makerere. Mm. And I used to do is, I used to travel a lot. Mm -hmm. Right. It would be New York, California mm -hmm. or, or uh, Florida mm -hmm. for work. Mm -hmm. But when I'm home, because I used to do a lot of projects, mm -hmm. um, I'm so tired. Like I wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. and work till 11 o'clock at night, because mm -hmm. I used to work from home. Mm -hmm. Even my cousin Lufania, mm -hmm. she used to work from home too. Mm -hmm. So her desk was right next to mine. Right. Uh, it was very difficult. Um, like she would cook. This is how bad she was. Mm -hmm. She would cook her food, breakfast. And I'm here. I've been up since 2 a.m. I don't want coffee. Mm. I would smell the food and she would not even offer. What? Yes. She was evil. And wow. then my mother mm -hmm. would make me mkorobo, mm -hmm. you know, the eggs and yes. pancakes, mm. and bring it to me. And she would tell her, why are you making? He's not a kid. Yeah. So guess what she started doing? Mm. Would have two dozens of eggs in the fridge. Mm -hmm. She would boil all of them. Yeah. So, so that my mother as does not, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. That is. But that's why we tell people we have uh, different cultures. Yes. So this is Mama has said, I know, I know. That's yes, that's no, no. Yeah. Or you my wake sister up. will come and actually make me something. Because mm -hmm. um, I'm working and they mm -hmm. can see mm -hmm. I haven't even gone up. I've been working since 2 a.m. Mm -hmm. Now it's about 1 a.m. Mm -hmm. I'm still working. Mm -hmm. uh, because non-stop I was on 
conference calls. Right. Because uh, I'm dealing with either California, mm -hmm. I'm on conference calls. Mm -hmm. I have four monitors right. in my office. Mm. Um, and then, because one is for Wall Street, mm -hmm. I have to see the market, watch mm -hmm. the market. Mm -hmm. Then the other one is CNN. Mm -hmm. And then the other two is for work. So, I mean, it got to a point uh, seven, eight years ago that it got really, really bad mm. to the point and you became, I became like completely uh, either oblivious, oblivious, mm. but I was ignoring. Mm -hmm. But, you know, sometimes in that position, you don't even know what to do. Mm. You have your mother. What do I do with my mother? Mm. My sister was not stable enough to be able to live with her. Mm. So I'm here now thinking I have to keep quiet mm. to protect the mother. Mm. Otherwise, what do I do? Where's the chapa with you, baby? Mzungu. 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 Now she doesn't have a place, mm. and I was hoping that we can, I can steal some money from my account mm. to go and see whether we can rent an apartment mm. for them to deliver that. Um, so it really got to a point, mm -hmm. like I remember uh, 2018, mm -hmm. it got really worse. Mm -hmm. She started mistreating my mother. Mm -hmm. At this time, my youngest son started driving, mm -hmm. so, and I noticed her services are no longer needed. Now my son is independent, mm -hmm. he's able to drive himself. Right. So, I can't have my mother. Mm -hmm. Like she'll hide some food for, that she likes, mm -hmm. or she'll cook food that she knows my mother doesn't eat. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was like, okay, what do I do? My mother will sleep crying. Mm -hmm. She'll be crying. Mm -hmm. uh, so when it got worse in 2019, mm -hmm. my mother came home. I, send, I used to send her at least once a year mm. uh, to come and visit the rest of the family right and uh 2019 when she came after she left this is when she told me <laughs> i want to show room she wants Shosho's room yes for my what mother, my mother's room <clears throat> i'm an alala so you're a wife yes wow so what do i do so now mm -hmm. i called my sister and mm -hmm. i said we need to figure something out quick we need to figure something out quick so I said, we need to build a house quick because mom cannot go back to Shags. Mm -hmm. uh, and my sister had a property in uh, Gong, mm -hmm. past Gong. Mm -hmm. So I said, uh, and she said, why don't we put a house for her? Um, now it's a matter of finding resources. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, let me talk to Graham, my other brother, who's mm -hmm. in the US, mm -hmm. and Joe Key, mm -hmm. the other one in the UK. Mm -hmm. And I said, we need to put some resources together. Right. So at least we can. Uh, build her something mm. really quick because mm. um, she was staying with my sister my sister had her kid mm -hmm. her one daughter with the kids and I could tell my mother was not comfortable mm. so that's exactly what we did so I had to take some money to go um, to go and build a house mm -hmm. and then my sisters everybody was contributing um, even though I contributed most everybody was actually contributed to the house so that's what exactly we did in six months the house was done mm. little did I know that my wife was using my oldest son to track everything I do on my computer. Oh, no. So he knew mm -hmm. I was going to bed at two. My son would go in my computer and look at the everything mm -hmm. that I do. Because he was, he's a smart kid. Mm. I didn't know. And my sister told me, you trust your son? I said, what do you mean? I see him in your computer a couple mm. times. My personal computer. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow. Found out I had an account at Equity. Found out I had a pound to Citibank, mm -hmm. and they've been doing all this. I look at my chora. This is going on for like five years. You be be a record on your chora. Me, I was just oblivious. Right. I was mm -hmm. ignorant. Mm -hmm. Where? That's a mama me talka. I mean the Harudi, Kenya. Harudi. That's a nyumba ime. When me kuja, I made a few trips to come and mm -hmm. monitor the house, and I was on the phone every day. Right. Um. So now she's already settled. I got all this stuff. To carry ship, back to Kenya. Vitu vya kizote. Now, that's when in in 2022, I was in the house. Actually, I was helping my son with his car, and I got 
sheriff, come over. Mm -hmm. Okay, are you Isaac Ishengo? Yes. Uh, you have a document here. You need to sign. Kufungua divorce papers. Oh no. Na yeye, bibi, yuko kwa nyumba. She's inside the house and are being served outside. Mm. I said, wow, how can this be? So I said, you know, and my son looked at me. I, I think she knew. Mm -hmm. He knew. Because mm -hmm. he already, my own older son mm -hmm. is manipulated by the mother. Right. Hey, kaona hapa. Hakuna mchezo. So how, what do I do? So I called a lawyer. Um, and I said, uh, I need your legal advice. I've been served. Mm -hmm. I'm still in the house. Hey. Aniambia, if I were you, I'll take off tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Leave. I said, what do you mean? All you have to do, I'm not, we've never had any physical. I've never been physical to the wife. Right. Never. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe in it. Mm -hmm. But uh, she has a temper. Mm -hmm. Big time temper. Sometimes she'll get angry and she'll mm -hmm. throw plates mm -hmm. across the room. Mm -hmm. uh, or slam the doors. Mm -hmm. Broken up, fixed three times. Doors. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm biased on her. Mm -hmm. So, I said, what do I do? Where do I go? So I start packing. Mm -hmm. And all you have to do is, you know your wife. And this lawyer happens to know her. Mm -hmm. You know your wife. Mm -hmm. All she'll do is you'll be walking on the hallway and you bump into her. She dialed 911. Let me tell you something. It'll be a very difficult case to live with it. Mm -hmm. Even though you're not violent. Mm -hmm. All it is is you say you've been abused. And I know some people who have mm -hmm. gone through this. I know. So I say, well, let me pack. Mm -hmm. So I went and got some boxes. Guns I could pack. I didn't even know where I'm going mm -hmm. at that time. Not even two weeks I was served with alimony and child support. Hmm. My son at the time was only two months before he turned 18. But you tell me something that's not crazy. Hmm. Two months before he turned 18 for, for, for child support. Hmm. And we had not even had a hearing. No, we had a hearing. It was hmm. urgent hearing. Hmm. Uh, she applied for what is called a special relief. Right. We had a hearing in less than a month. And um, said, you know, we had to, I had to produce my st uh, pay stubs. <laughs> my whatever, my, you know, my income tax. Mm -hmm. And the judge made the order that day. Mm -hmm. I have to pay child support. And this alimony. Two it months to 18 almost years? Almost $10,000 a month. For those two months? No, no. Mm -hmm. This is how much now is going to be. And in Pennsylvania, this but is, that, is it, So how, how, how old is the son now? He was two months before he turned 18, the youngest. Okay. The oldest is already over 20. Mm -hmm. so, that's so this one you'll be paying for the youngest? Yes, for two months. Wow. Yeah. Mama No, no, it's not her. It's no, who you are a judge? Uh, almost ten thousand dollars a month. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot. So I went to. I got my paycheck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I only had three hundred dollars on my mm -hmm. paycheck. Yeah, they took the whole month, and then some. So my paycheck was nothing. What do you do with three hundred? And I'm now had to move. Yeah. Within the same week, I was served with another um, uh, order. Mm -hmm. They're going to freeze my account. Hmm. I then went and checked the account, our joint account. She had already moved a lot of money to her what? own personal account. Wow. There was only like maybe $1,500 left. Now you're telling me, I'm a Hamisha. I'm a Hamisha. I had no idea. Remember, I was working so much, I was traveling. I didn't have time to look at what the account. You I trusted her? Well, yeah, with the paying the bills, because she was the one who was paying the bills. Mm -hmm. Another big mistake. Hmm. Yeah. So, so bills in Akuja took a Majinak is not as you could put in a money, mortgage, money, yeah. car payment. Mm -hmm. No, we didn't have any car payments mm -hmm. were done, right? Um, water bill, electric bill, mm -hmm. and you could not eat. Okay, so um, I went to the account that's when I realized it hit me about well, forty thousand dollars taken from from my joint account. That's crazy. Yeah, so now mm -hmm. I only have three hundred dollars mm -hmm. left in my paycheck. Mm -hmm. I need to move. What do I do? Yeah. So now I have to figure out who to call. Um, I called some friends. I said, I need to play somewhere. These, you know, I have three bo big, huge boxes. Mm. Just my clothes. Mm. I never took anything out of the house. Mm. Uh, because where am I going to take it? So anyway, uh, now they, they had a freeze order mm -hmm. to freeze all my assets. I was like, okay, what's going on? The reason, and I went to court. He's a citizen of the U.S. and a citizen of Kenya. And my client, this is her lawyer, my client is afraid he's going to deplete all the uh, 
marital assets mm. and move it to Kenya. Mm. That day when we went to court, now the day before the court, I met with my lawyer. And uh, this gets scary. She interviewed me, mm -hmm. like she was going to interview me during the court the following day. Mm -hmm. And they said, you're a credible witness. I said, I don't have anything to hide. Um, I'm telling you the truth. Mm. That morning, the following morning, the case was at 10, no, 9 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> right. Uh, I was waiting. 10 minutes before the, the, uh, the court session, mm -hmm. I saw my lawyer meet with her lawyer. And her lawyer gave her a piece of paper. And then two minutes before we got called in, my lawyer came to me and goes to me, uh, we have written an agreement. They're going to freeze your assets. Now you're a lawyer. Yes. And I said, what? Oh, my. I had not even finished reading. Mm -hmm. We got called in. They go in there, we got sworn in, and the judge, I mean, the, uh, her lawyer goes to the judge, Your Honor, we have written an agreement. Mm. You're going to freeze the asset. I said, you're aware? And I said, now I'm shaking. I'm under duress. Mm. Um, I don't have anywhere to go. What do I do? They froze my assets. And it was immediate. They electronically submitted the documents to freeze my retirement, my pension. Now I don't know where to go. Mutu alikuwa nafanya vizuri, sasa umekwama sasa. Now, sasa nimekwama. Na hii pesa, ambao wana freeze, Yes. this was my nest egg. Nikuwa nimetayarisha. Because I wanted to retire 59 and a half. And I was prepared. So sasa, you may freeze you. Is the divorce paper will sign? It's a design. I wish I never did. Lakini. Tusa ndiyo wana kimbiza hii mambo. Eh. Usihame. Sasa ni kufungiwa kufungiwa mambo yote. Sasa. Sasa hiyo na hiyo order sasa imewekwa. Right. Freeze assets. I can't even withdraw money. Because now my goal was let me go withdraw some money. A few hundred thousand. Let me just settle. Nothing. So lifanyaji. Siku jipanga. So now. The little money I had, I said, you know what? I'm better off just leaving, going to Kenya. Because here, e, it, it mm. when I look at my paycheck, and I'm like, I'm left with nothing. Mm. So where can I even go and rent a place? Um, I need to survive. So I decided, let me watch any hamia Kenya. And I took the stuff, shipped it. I only took two suitcases mm -hmm. and the money. I said, I'm going to So work. Now, they told me you can only work remote in another country for so long. Mm. You either have to come back to the U.S. Yes. That's a particular threat. Asa, unajua sasa wana nikata mushahara. And I'm looking through and I'm saying, wait a minute. I'm left with nothing. Hakuna kitu nabakia. Kitu kitu wako sana. Kwa unafanyia watu wengine kazi sasa. Depression. Depression kanishika. But I tell you, this is, this is when reality heavy. What do I do? I didn't plan myself in advance. Mm. What I thought I was planning, I can't even access. Masa, now, Bibi Nazia Kuskuma, the lawyer, she has one of the top lawyers. Mm -hmm. um, my lawyer became compromised mm -hmm. because they saw how much was in my retirement mm -hmm. and they saw they can get a percentage of it. So guess what? My hands are collude. Now, Nikaitisho Makaratasi Sijui statements that would talk about five years. Um, exploratory document. Ata kanzi uku, properties uku. Na uko. Kata wana chora tu. Wana chora. Little did I know what they were planning. Sasa huyu lawyer, tukaanze kukombana na ye. Kama mbia nao, you know I represent my interest. At the time, nisha mulipa hilo pesa yote, nikuwa na yoko account. $30,000. Wow. Yeah, she was not doing me any good. So, now I don't have money to pay her. Um, Sasa ni... Kashindua, what do I do? Mm -hmm. What do I do? Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> it got to a point, Sasa, uh, e case is becoming now mentally draining because every week, every month, mm -hmm. I'm getting another order. Mm -hmm. Sasa, work, I could not work anymore. Mm -hmm. Depression, I just really could focus. Mm -hmm. So I had to, I was given two choices. Either resign or uh, voluntarily. Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, or you're fired. Yes. So I chose the latter. And I said, you're a good employee, you can always come back and work. Uh, Did I know, two months later, they eliminated my department. Mm. I was like, I'm going to go to my house. And I said, I'm Where do I get the money? They depleted all the money that was in my account. No. Because it was frozen. 
mm. but they could, they could withdraw to pay her alimony. Mm. So now I don't have any money. I still have to pay her alimony, mm. and you know, child support was already done. So now where do I go? So I notified them. I called domestic relations. Um, Bia Sina, Sina Kazi. Mm. Uh, I said, you, know, you can file a petition to modify the alimony. Mm -hmm. Kinda, mm. like kinda through. Wow. So no more paying alimony. Mm. That was, uh, pesa. Last year in June. Mm. Na i alimony yake kuna mnyo pesa ngapi sasa? This is almost eight thousand a month. Wow. Yeah. Eight thousand. Yeah. We are to find a case where is it? Are you going to make a million? I can imagine. I can imagine. Now the TV. Eight thousand. That's a lot yeah. of money. Now. Mm -hmm. It was stopped. Mm. That was in June mm. of last year. Mm -hmm. Guess what? She filed an urgent uh, special relief mm -hmm. petition. Mm. Let me tell you something. I went to court and the judge, this was all pre-planned. The judge, you have experience. You, you are hireable. You can work anywhere. Mm. Go back to work. The court session was five minutes. Mm. Mpaka, remember, all the judges, the lawyers are all white. Jama moja we come in sheriff. Alikuja kani ni pesema. Sorry, brother. I feel bad for you. Now, I got another another petition mm. to appear in front of the master. Me si kuna lawyer. Mm -mm. I couldn't afford one. Mm -mm. I didn't have a lawyer, so I went to uh, the court, and I told the master. She came outside. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm representing myself. So I said, okay. They went inside. I said, we'll call you. Mm -hmm. This is when I realized the court is biased. Mm -hmm. In any court proceedings, mm. you have the plaintiff and the defendant. Mm. If the judge needs to communicate, had to call both of them. You're right. In this case, I was self-representing. Mm -hmm. So I should have been called when the other lawyer was called. Mm -hmm. Half an hour, they went inside. And I was like, this is when I realized I'm screwed. Mm. So they went in. As a lawyer, and I said, already said I'm going to represent myself, um, I was not allowed to talk. Not allowed to talk. And he prepared mm -hmm. something to the effect of mm. what has transpired. Mm. And the wife was lying mm -hmm. um, about all the things they did to make me get my assets frozen and everything. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, the lawyer interviewed, I mean, cross examined her, and then also to be the same. Mm. This whole time, we were last one in. You never heard of a court proceeding without both uh, a defendant and the plaintiff being sworn in. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, when she was done, they were done. She was done. Mm -hmm. That's when the master said, "I guess we should uh, to uh, Pisha, or you know what they call it. That's why go uh, Pisha." Yeah. Mm. This one said, "Wow, this is interesting." So the master, and I said, "Your Honor." Um, in order to respect myself, representing myself, am I allowed to to make a speech or present what I had prepared? Mm. No. Nope. Wow. Allah. You had time to bring a lawyer. I said, I am my own lawyer. Was not given an opportunity. Mm. Now, back in my head, I knew there was communication between the master and her lawyer mm. and my wife. So, of course, there is ex parte communication, mm. which could jeopardize my case. So I You're knew right. my case was. Yes. And right after that, I wrote them an email, the master and the lawyer. Mm. And I say, no due respect. And I analyze everything about me being self-representing and also to the ex parte communication that existed. Mm. And also to the fact that we were not sworn in until the wife was done with her testimony. I did not give testimony. I was not allowed. So they allowed one party? Yes. So now, mm. this is strike number two. You have mm. the first one, they froze my assets mm. um, without due process because I was not even given a chance to even defend myself mm -hmm. or even ex exonerate mm. and actually expose the lies that <laughs> the wife had told them. Mm. Now, the third strike, we had now, the master came up with a report. The report say, recommended that I relinquish my pension, my retirement, the house to the wife mm. and the cars three cars okay now on the basis of first of all the wife created a spreadsheet this account which created my, the problem for me uh, I was doing a lot of transactions I used to bring people to Kenya 
and also to Dominican Republic. We have a place, a vacation mm -hmm. uh, club in Dominican mm -hmm. Republic. Mm -hmm. So I created a company to be able to send those people. And it was doing very well. Mm -hmm. um, so I will use that account instead of using our family account to be able, I was receiving all this money. Sometimes I will show like 30,000, I'm sending it to Kenya mm -hmm. uh, for the tour company. I'm sending it or using my credit card mm -hmm. uh, to pay for the flights. Right. Uh, either the so all these transactions, mm -hmm. like showing I paid 30,000 mm -hmm. to credit card. Mm -hmm. I received this amount. Mm -hmm. She created a spreadsheet and showed all the money that was coming in to the account mm -hmm. that she didn't know about mm -hmm. and coming out. That's considered a marital asset. Hmm. It was hundreds of thousands. So now the line, the, the, the line that the lawyer used was, she asked me a question, yes. Did your wife know about this account? I said, no. So you, you open you an account without you, knowing for your wife. This you is what, you I you what do I do? Man. That is considered a marital asset. And you moved all these hundreds of thousands of dollars. To Kenya. To Kenya. Now, mm. I said to the uh, master, um, but she doesn't have any proof where the money went. I said, no, do you have any proof to, to say, to counter? I said, I can go and bring my bank statements, which I had already provided the lawyer. Mm. I said, no, it is not here today. It does not exist. Wow. Case closed. That's crazy. Now, 14 days, mm. that's when the report went to the judges. The judges had to evaluate mm -hmm. the report and then come up with a decision to accept or reject. Mm -hmm. It did not even take one day. The order. Hmm. That's strike number three. Strike number four, the judge who made the order is our neighbor. Lives two, three houses down from my house. Mm. This is somebody who would go to the bar, have a glass of wine. Mm. I used to contribute, when he was a district attorney for the longest time, mm -hmm. I used to contribute to his campaign. Right. My father-in-law used to contribute their friends. Mm. Instead of him recusing himself from the case because of conflict of interest, mm. when I did it, signed. And he knows me very, very well. This is somebody I, I have his cell phone number. Mm. Now, the judges, three of them, besides him, uh, in their prior, prior life, they mm. were lawyers. Mm -hmm. They used to practice with my father in law. He's a lawyer. They now became judges. Mm. And I saw two of them specifically who have actually come to my house. Mm. One of them signed the order. Oh no. This is when you realize mm. this is the case is working against you. And of course, sasa ninaona kama sana sana wanaangalia wanaona huyu mtu akukuja. Yes. Hiyo tena inachangia kwa pakubwa sana. They have to make sure you go back empty. Yes. Mm. And before I even proceed, mm -hmm. my wife had told my sister one time, mm. if your brother ever leaves me, I will make sure he's done. Wow. He will be working for me. This is a threat, and not just once, mm. twice, I told my sister. Mm. Me, I'm just oblivious, I'm just ignorant, didn't pay attention. Mm. But now, going back to the case, now the judges have already signed the order mm -hmm. uh, to freeze the assets, mm -hmm. to now um, transfer everything mm -hmm. to her. Mm. Uh, now another order is to continue paying that I'm capable of getting a job. Mm -hmm. So I'm left with nothing. So now, or keep, uh, the lawyer now threatened me with sanctions because there was an order to transfer everything. And actually they signed what is called a QDRO, mm -hmm. a Codified Domestic Relations Order. Right. That is sent to my 401k mm -hmm. um, administrator mm -hmm. and also to the, my pension. And it's, it's quite a significant mm -hmm. money. Um, what they did, how they calculate is every year I'm supposed to pay her 60,000 in alimony, thousand dollars in alimony. In Pennsylvania, for every three years of marriage, you pay alimony one year. Mm -hmm. We've been married for 27 years, so I have to pay her nine years. Do the math. That's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. So they figured mm -hmm. we are wiping all this. The house, they did a valuation, um, and you know there was a few hundred thousand mm -hmm. uh, equity. That's okay. I had to sign it. So now the way she wanted, she set me a trap. She set a trap. I was there last week because mm -hmm. I had to go to court to uh, our office. Mm -hmm. She sent me the order to transfer the, the deed to her name because that's in the order mm -hmm. and it has to be done in Pennsylvania. This February. 
last month. I had to go to US. Mm. Yeah, I had to go to US to sign. Yeah. And to sign and also to pay half of the fee to prepare the QDRO. Are you, st are you working? I'm not working. And how are you going to do that? I sent them. I said, I don't have a job. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, I can't even afford to pay um, for the, uh, the fee. And it's for fee for them to go and transfer money mm. from my account to her. Yeah. Hmm. And she threatened me. She said, if you do not pay this amount, I will file a petition for contempt of court and also to um, sanctions. It was a trap because what they did, they wanted to take my uh, passports. And once they hold it, forget about it. In mm. other words, I, I cannot leave. Mm. So on, this was last week. This is when I got the, uh, another uh, threat because I owe her, I haven't been working, mm. uh, 40, it's up to 45,000 mm -hmm. right now, alimony. And then she sends me, uh, I say, I'm going to be filing a petition because you're in contempt of court. You owe my client $42,000 for arrears. This is when I realized, I'm because now contempt of court means that we'll be arrested yeah. for six months or um, then they take your license mm. and in my case they will confiscate my passports the lesson learned. Mm. Nah. So I, I'm outside uh, because not many times to na to na scare these stories from men. Mm -hmm. We always see stories from women saying when you are now we want test, we want to hear it. And I don't even know, even know how many uh, uh, Kenyan men who are in the US, mm -hmm. we try to hide mm -hmm. when you are mepitia magumu sana, mm -hmm. but they, they are afraid of speaking out like you are doing. Yes. I mean, so now Ulifika Jokazama, now I have to open up because now this is too know, much for me. You know, I just, you know, funny enough, mm. I've met two Kenyans mm -hmm. here in Nairobi. Right. One of them, I didn't even recognize them. Ulu liko na chapo na bibi. Na siyo mzungu, ameoa mkenya mwenzake. That guy was left with absolutely nothing. Ako hapa Nairobi. I felt so bad. And this is the second guy. Mm. The other guy, he's became an alcoholic. Mm. You can't even tell somebody who. And he lived in the US for over 20 some years. Mm. They're in the same predicament. Mm. And I could name a few mm. um, that I know mm. that have their suffering in silence. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So now the wife is making a lot of money mm. as a nurse. Right. I can't say come with her out. Mm. So now the guy is depressed. Mm. He's the one who actually bought the whole family. Mm -hmm. That's a ma ma mama. Mm. Yeah. So this, I would say about mm. five people that I know mm. in the same predicament. They are quiet. Mm. They are afraid. When on a walk. They, they are afraid of, you know, when you are this one only, to na that pride. Yes, that we don't want to expose ourselves. Mm. Uh, there's a lot. Me, I fell in depression. I mm. tell you, there's mm. a time I felt like the world is coming to an end, mm. to a point whereby I actually drove on um, when the expressway was first finished. Yes. Yes. New man and belly. Mm. Now, my sisters have been very supportive, but they got to a point, you know, we can't really help you yeah, much. Yeah, it's too much. Now, mm. And what happened actually, mm. I came, when I came here, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so I dug a hole. So I dug a hole. I dug a hole. I dug a hole. I dug a hole. I dug a a Disappeared. Jesus. Police, mm -hmm. Three times. Mm -hmm. I don't have a savior. Mm -hmm. So now I've lost $25,000. Um, in Because you can't have a real estate. Mm -hmm. I can't have a real estate. I can't have a real I can't have a real estate. I can't have a real estate. I can't go forward, I can't go backward. 
I mean, I'm trying to imagine, sasa, mm. if you try to tell someone ako hapa that being in America since 1997, 87, 87 yeah. at now we are in 2024, mm -hmm. and you can look back and say, I mean, I've been working for all these years. Mm -hmm. Mutu sasa ameniacha nikiwa yeah. heavy. Yeah. After you raise the kids. After you raise the kids. To the point they were independent. Na sasa, if the kids now, you know, they, they don't care anymore about that. The kids are already being colluded, especially the oldest one. Mm -hmm. The youngest one, I reached out to him. Mm -hmm. um, Hima was very, very close. Mm -hmm. And even the oldest one, I was very, very close to mm -hmm. them because I really, I was involved with the activities. Right. Uh, whether it's soccer. I even used to coach soccer. Mm -hmm. um, soccer, uh, whether it's uh, football, mm -hmm. basketball. They were both musicians. They mm -hmm. in, into music, piano. Mm -hmm. And we used to travel everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, homework, I helped them. Um, I gave them all the love I could. But Kenny, that's what Kati Walifika Kati. Now my oldest one, he's an engineer, mm -hmm. uh, mechanical engineer. Mm -hmm. We give him a dog on a an article, mm -hmm. engineering. Mm -hmm. So they have done well. Very smart kids, mm -hmm. very well mm -hmm. mannered. Like Kenny Sasa. Mm -hmm. The grandparents, mm. the mama, mm. they have really corrupted to paint this guy as a very bad mm. person mm. who doesn't care about the family. Um, mm. th what really hurt me the most, that's because when I saw my kids were not talking to me, that's when I realized, what have I done to the kids? Mm. I've never abused them uh, just because I have denied them expensive stuff mm. that I didn't feel it was necessary. Yes. You know, I give them a little bit, mm. but it's... Uh, I was in competition with my, my in-laws mm. and it was a battle on a pesa and they demean you mm. to show them, ah, your dad cannot afford this. That mm. was hurtful. Mm. That's what funny. But anyway, the best thing ever happened to me mm. is leaving that house. The sign of relief mm. just came the day you left. I left. Mm. Bye. I'll never go back to the house. Mm. And it's as if I knew mm. I was losing everything. But I was ready to start a new life. Because right now, seeing a stress at mm -hmm. 6 a.m., mm -hmm. you know, yeah. in the middle of the night, and you go to the house, and you go to the house, you think, yeah. So, so like, you said that you were going to the room, so you were sleeping in two different rooms? Yes, yes. Wow. For the longest time, for five years. Mm. Yeah. Where? And let me tell you, when the people came over, he was a completely different person. He came over and bipolar. Yeah, and he was to especially have friends or mm. Kija. Mm. Where? Sweet wife. Oh my goodness. Mm. Yeah, it was <laughs> oh sure. When I do another Kenya or Kivos, you know what I mean? I know a lot of men who mm. have been abused. I've seen. Kuna jema moja ni ona kichapwa. Na bibiya kemi Kenya. So. It's woman, happening. But men have to make that decision. So know? who will rescue men? I think men have to. Uh, listen, that decision, I wish I made that decision a long mm. time ago mm. to just leave. Um, because I would have saved myself mm. all the hassle and the grief. You know, I'm at the end because yes. the divorce is going to end. And I'll, right now, I've accepted. Mm. I've accepted the fact that that money is gone. And I don't even want to think about it. And the day now, a lot of opportunities are now starting to come. Mm. So far, nothing yet has okay. closed. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you right now, the sign of relief I have. Mm. What happened in the end of last week? Who mm. last week? Mm. Now, see, na, see, na, see, na, see, na, na, see, God has a way. Mm. The minute you let something go that the devil wants, mm. that's when your days of it, it's a reprisal mm -hmm. that you're going to be able to succeed right. even three times. Mm. Or even, what does I mean? I don't even regret. No, because you are a smart man, and I don't know when you are a very smart guy. So, are you still in PA? I'm a Ukirudu, and I decided. Sina nyumba. I don't have a house. Those are easy. Because I'm a Uko homeless. Ni 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 Uko homeless. Ni si na nyumba. I don't have a house. Ni meenda to Juzi last week. I stayed with a friend of mine. Wow. And this is another thing. Mm. The friends you think are your friends mm. are your friends when you had money. Wakati huna huna. And this is it. I've seen it. I have erased a lot of numbers. Me mm. and no, I have helped so many Kenyans. Mm. I used to help Kenyans mm. when they first came. So security numbers, driver's license, makaratasi. I was helping them. I've called a number of them in tears. Mm. If you please send me a hundred dollars. There are some who stayed with me. There's, there's two of them who have hosted for a whole year. Ah, man, goodbye. Mm. And this is when <coughs> I realized I'm alone. All these years I've helped you. I had one guy, um, this one Kenyan guy, a co-signed a car. Mm. 
you went did not pay. I was stuck with a loan. Kuna mwingine, I had to put my house as collateral to avoid his jail time. Mm. Bill bond 200,000. So I was taking loans because I didn't want the wife to know mm. to pay the bill bond. $200,000. Na wakati wewe kwa shida, ako hapo Kenya. Mm. And I did not want him to be extradited because my name would appear on the paper. Right. That's no one. Yeah. Wow. Hey, Paul Sana. So, are you thinking to go back? America is well, I know. I know America like the back of my hand. Mm. Na sahi, I need to heal. I need to get myself mm, together. together. Um, I know America can go back and get work. Mm. Um, especially in my profession, mm -hmm. I, I have enough mm -hmm. experience. Mm. Um, I just can now go back. Now, after this decree is issued, mm -hmm. no longer paying out the money. That is, she cannot come back after me. Mm. Yeah, that's a good thing. Come on, as is fresh. You get a good start mm. without a baggage. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Where sasa ukum matumizi na tumia nini? Nini? Uku sasa like now you are here in Kenya. I mean, <laughs> survival. These times, ni me furiza mbaka ni me mariza ku furiza. Hmm. My sister, sasa, you know, sometimes I say, hey, send me a, uh, send me five thousand. Uh, five thousand is nothing. Mm. Nowadays, uh, it's like nothing. But they've been helping to a point now. Even mm. I'm, uh, mm. you know, you, Aibu. Aibu. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, and the, I see you have been um, through a lot. But uh, mm -hmm. what I'll always tell people is that there is still hope. Yes, there is hope. I mean, I mean, uh, you should never give up. You should not give up. Uh, right now, trust yes. me. Mm. If you had asked me that question, mm. tell me that. Mm. about a few months ago mm. I said no there's mm. no hope mm. now I see the light at the end of the tunnel. Mm. things are now mm. opening up Amen. I mean I, I had a lot of I mean uh, apply for mm. so many jobs mm. right now I have about six interviews right mm. now six interviews in the US in the US mm. and that's actually mm. all over the world mm. uh, one is in Dubai mm -hmm. uh, a couple of them in England mm -hmm. and the rest in the US okay um, so that's light even if they haven't given me a job, mm, mm. I see light. I know kuna labda kuna mtu anakutazama pale anasema this looks like a very good guy. Na yeye pia amepitishwa mambo mangumu na na bwana anasema ai jameni sasa see if we can combine efforts to na tunaweza move together. Sasa naja unauliza do you still have space for love maybe in the future? Yes, yes, absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. I knew you know when when life when you go through life mm. like this mm. and you finally see a light at the end of the tunnel. When you're so low, you don't see hope. Mm. Now they own hope. They mm. own hope. Mm. Like in see you, see you, Kwanini, watching mm. the pange. So, 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 And I would like to tell men who are mm. in the same situation because there's a lot of them. Mm. And those people who are gonna see this are gonna say, right. "Boy, I'm in the same predicament. Mm. What do I do? Mm. You have to run. You have to get out. Mm. You can start all over. Mm. You don't have to stay like I did mm. all those years mm. in pain." mental abuse mm. i went through so much mental abuse mm. but i was suffering in silence and all the men who are going through the same thing need to make a decision kiumane mm. kiumane mm. toka mapema toka mapema usitoke huko wakati uko mzee una nguvu za kufanya kitu kama huko us yes na unajaribu kuficha mahali pesa na, na nini mm. ujue serikali ya america itakufuata mm. all the property you think you own here in kenya mm. is in your name chunga sana chunga you know, Americans see the one thing America did, mm. they have a extradition. Mm. Um, if the wife, because when they do the ex, uh, exploratory document, I'm going to ask you to list everything you have in Kenya. And now they can actually reach out. And I know somebody, I know a CIA, mm. an FBI, and I know they have the ability to be able to, they have lawyers mm. that they actually are hired and paid by the American embassy. Mm. Wow. So it is, you're not, you're not safe. Mm. Now, now I came to Kenya, mm. and I'm sorry to say this, there are mm. sisters mm. on the Gundua. They're taking advantage of the American system mm. to be able to fuata majama. Very sad. Ukiona kama hamusikizani, mapema, your best, muachane. Wewe ujipange. There's a lot of Kenyan men here that mm. I know of. Mm. Na kuna wengi, about mm. the Jewi, mm. wako wapa wanasafa. There's one particular guy, mm -hmm. Kenyan guy, uh, mm -hmm. he had a Mercedes. 
au kazini akitoka kazini ni find the Mercedes akaenda kwa security kapigia polisi they gonna trace this car here the wife took the extra key came ali mkanya akaenda kachukua Mercedes sasa jamaa akachukua Uber akaenda nyumbani kufika nyumbani locks changed wow Then you tell me mm. that's a Kenyan again is a Kenyan mm. so this law mm. in the US applies to everyone but nasio wazungu yeah. vile kuna watu nasema ah uliwa mzungu mm. ah sio mzungu hata wakikuyu mm. hata wakamba mm. wabaluya wana haingaishana mm. so mama nasemaje sasa hiyo mama my mother has cried mm. me, fact, she's the one who has given me encouragement mm. nianiambia mm. na kaniambia go read job uh chap- i mean the first chapter and the second chapter mm-hmm. it will give you courage mm. about job and how devil used him mm. and everything he lost mm it was returned mm. two times amen eh mm-hmm. she has given me a lot of encouragement mm-hmm. you know she keeps in touch with me mm-hmm. and i call her almost every day not every other day mm-hmm. support system in zuri sana mm-hmm. even my sisters we okay. talk every single day mm-hmm. and when i'm so low i know i can count on them mm-hmm. so my mother has told me do not even look back what you have gone through and have watched to where you're going mm-hmm. you go mm-hmm. and don't even think anything bad about it Mm. Ata kama sahihi huna pesa mm. usifikirie mm. na pesa yako inakuja mm. wakati hiyo pesa itatoka. You are right. So that is actually what really gave me the courage mm. to even say you know what. Mm. Yeah. Eh, jameni. So wewe ukipata mzungu uwezi uwa sasa. Mimi umejuta. Ai. <laughs> hey. hey. America. Mm. Nafuta bibi ukae Kenya. Maisha ni mzuri Kenya. If you have a way. Mm. Me I learned this country mm. after being conned nika sasa nimejua mm. yeah. I was so naive wow. even coming here mm. yeah. we parting shot sasa hmm? message kwa wanawake wanaotesa wanaume ai for those all of you ladies mm-hmm. who are really really mistreating a man mm-hmm. please learn from me what I've gone through the emotional trauma and if you're subjecting your man into this type of trauma please I beg you and please rethink there's a lot of men I know your husbands, boyfriends that are suffering like I was suffering. They're not able to go to talk to somebody to tell them um, I need help. Please be considerate. Hii ni pesa inakuja naenda. The money you're making and the money you want from your hard working husband. I'm going to help you. So. Mm. Wow. So just in case somebody want to reach out to you. Yes. Wana kupata namna gani? Uh I have my Kenyan line mm-hmm. uh, +254 mm-hmm. 795 mm-hmm. 2884 mm-hmm. again the number is +254 uh, 795 2886 Mm. Asanteni sana. Wow. So I mean, wanaume wazangu wenye mko diaspora jameni not only in America, other countries. Uh, I know most of you sababu wengine wananikufigianga chini ya meza and I thank you because umekuwa na courage ya kuja kuongea hii maneno. Please, I mean, uh, let's stand with our brother, eh? Let's stand with him. I mean, unaweza mpigia simu and college him, unaweza mtumia ka kitu, si ndio? Yeah. Because maybe you need that. Na, na, I mean, you need that here in Kenya. So, kama uko hapa area before you bring your mind together muambie mm-hmm. ndugu yangu just i mean nimesikia story yako na kusukumia hii even ladies i know there are ladies who are very considerate they, i mean they understand they are people who respect husbands mm-hmm. kuna watu wanapenda wanaume wao na wa, wa, wazee wao and i still believe you can as well encourage our brother and tell him tomorrow will be beautiful so brother yes i hope to see you next time smiling and telling me now i sit down here and uh, i was there now i'm here yeah that was very good it's going to happen god bless you yes, na kuongeza maisha mingi and of course reach out to him majina yote yako ni isaac, isaac gishengo yenye iko kwa mpesa ni isaac gishengo so yes, yes. so just in case you want to stand with our brother even if it's not money kumpigia simu kum whatsapp uh-huh. i mean talk to him na ukirudi america make sure tumeonana ah nitakuwa hapa kwanza acha mambo ishe I hope wata wata kutafuta wata kuvuta huku. Sasa kama wewe unataka advantage baba ni roya sasa eh jameni. You finding a case you can win. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Sasa na wale wanataka kukuja huko wanatuambiaga tutafutie wazugu. We? <laughs> Kitawalamba. Kitamulamba. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes. Tuko hapo upande wa Rai Maxuta Hotel and of course this is a hotel I always tell people about. Umeionaje by the way? Oh very nice. Mm. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, the area is. Mtaikuja na relax. Ai. 
kama sasa wewe uko ukitoka na uko Nairobi unakuja hapa yeah. una relax yes hapo ni pao anyway wow. thank you very much ukitaka kuja ku relax hapa Kenya just come to Remax uh, Suit Hotel na utakuwa na nafasi nzuri sana naitwa Jeremy Damaris